Hello, this is Adrian Gomez, and today's video is going to be about using Game Center to authenticate to Game Sparks. And this video is going to be very similar to the one where I use Google Play to authenticate to Game Sparks. So I'm going to skip some of the similar items. So I'm at the Game Sparks portal. I'm going to click on Edit. And under integration, you're going to need to check off Apple iOS. Then you come down to the bottom and click on Save and Close. Then you're going to go into Configuration, Integration. And under the Apple integration here, you're going to click on Edit. And you're going to enter in your, your Apple ID. In this case, I'm using an Apple, my bundle ID from uh, one of my games because I didn't feel like gathering a uh, fake uh, game into my Apple Connect uh, into my Apple Connect and that's all you need to do on the game spark side so let's look at the, the code and if you go into build settings you'll notice that I have um, the game sparks plugin I also have the Game Center plugin from Corona, and I'm using the ID Verify Sake plugin that I recently um, uploaded to the Corona Marketplace. Before you could use this plugin, you just have to activate it. I'm going to show you the code. The code is very similar. Uh, as I said before, this is very similar to the Google Play connection. Uh, once uh, I start out, like I did for Google Play, by connecting to GameSparks, just the connection request. So if you see here on System Event, Application Start, Connect to GameSparks. And uh, the callback is the availability callback. So when it comes back from the availability callback uh, and is available is true, then I do two things. Uh, for this demo, I I init the 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 signature plugin, and I init the Game Center plugin, and I provide both callback the the callback for the Game Center plugin, and the callback for the for the signature plugin. Okay. When the Game Center comes big, comes into the callback the first time, it's going to it's going to be of type init. And in that case, I'm going to ask for the load local player because I we need two pieces of information to authenticate from the load local player to GameSparks. The second time it comes in, it's going to be a event type of load local player. And we're going to get those two pieces of information. One is the player ID and one is the alias. Once I have the player ID and the alias, I'm going to request the signature. And I just created the method. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so all I'm doing is uh, calling the segment, uh, calling the method get signature of this plugin. And then the callback of the plugin, you're going to see that it comes back and all this all this all you would get back from this plugin is the key URL, the salt, the signature, and the time span timestamp. And we're gonna use those value plus the two other value that we got from Game Center to do uh, authentication request to GameSparks. So here here is the authentication request to GameSparks. Uh, and it's built as most requests are to GameSpark. You do a request builder and then you could create the, the connection request. In this, game, in this case, it's a Game Center connection request. Press build to create, and you set the public key, the salt, the signature, and the timestamps from the signature plugin. And you set the display name and the external player ID from the Game Center node local player plugin. In the Game Center plugin, node local player request. And then you send the request, 
and you get the response back. So the demo app that I'm going to put up on GitHub, uh, you see that it doesn't really have a UI. It doesn't really run in the simulator at all um, because I need those two plugins. But I ran it before I started this video and I can show you what it looks like from the log perspective. Um, the first time it comes, as you see, so I init the, the game network, the game center plugin, comes in here. And then after I init the game center plugin, I request the load local player. And from the load local player, we're going to use the player ID and the alias. And you see it here. And then I use, and then I do a request to, to get the signature. And as you see here, uh, from the signature, I get the salt, the signature, the timestamp, whether it's error or not, but, and the URL. Then I use all that information to do a Game Center connection request to GameSparks. And I get a response back saying, is it a new player? False. Uh, because I tried it a couple of times, the authentication response, the auth token, the request ID, the user ID, and the display name. And that's basically it. And I'm going to go back to GameSpark and show you how it looks like as a user. Uh, if I go into Data Explorer, and I go into System, Player, Okay, the first three, you know, were from the original video that I did about leaderboards. Uh, number four of the users here, this is the ID I did for, for Google Play. So you see Google Play is the username, and I have the display name here. Uh, these are the auth tokens, auth, auth tokens for Google Play and the external ID for Google Play. And then this one, the bottom one, is the one I just created uh, or was created from the demo app. And it looks very similar to Google Play, except that instead uh, the username is it says Google Game Center. And then it has my Game Center ID, has my display name from Game Center. Um, and external IDs is the Game Center ID. And that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to put this all up on the usual places, you know, the video in YouTube and uh, the code in GitHub. If you have any questions, as usual, send it to me at adriangomez.com or send it or send me a direct message in the Corona Labs forum. I, I don't usually look at, uh, at the comments on YouTube, so YouTube comments are the worst place for to get into a hold of me. Um, and that's it. I hope uh, this video is useful for somebody. And